Today I'm pleased to announce that Adobe has launched the 2017 edition of Adobe Captivate. I've prepared a series of videos on my YouTube channel to give you an introduction as to what's new. In this video, I'll show you the new Typekit integration. So for starters, let's take a look at Adobe Captivate 9 for a moment. I'm currently uh, set up to design a responsive design course. So obviously uh, one of the aspects of responsive design is that you know, you're gonna have these different breakpoints traditionally, and you'll be able to of course um, do all the different points in between the breakpoints as well. And that means that, you know, the font size will change and sometimes, you know, a line of text will be forced down into another line and so forth here. So, you know, traditionally what we've done with responsive design is we've really tried to stick with the web safe fonts. Now, in this particular instance, uh, I've chosen a font, it's a font called Rocket that I purchased a while back for another client uh, who is who requires the Rocket font for their, their look and feel, uh, their branding and so forth. And since I have purchased it, it's mine to use of, uh, as I see fit. And of course, uh, now I've got an example where I, where I would like to use it again. Uh, unfortunately, if I was to publish this course, here's what happens. Uh, let's just take a look. I'm going to use my iPad because, of course, the the Rocket font is installed on my computer. So let me just get up here nice and close and I'll show you what happens. The Rocket font gets replaced with, my guess is, some kind of Times New Roman type font. It's close, but as you can see here, if you compare what's on my iPad with what's actually on my copy of Adobe Captivate 9, you'll see that font is very different. Uh, certainly it's fine for us as designers because when we're designing the course, we'll see the Rocket font. It's installed as one of our system fonts and, uh, and everything looks fine. But when you go to publish it and distribute it, it becomes an entirely different situation. So, um, you know, what we often have to do is uh, <laughs> Uh, choose just the web safe fonts. For those that aren't aware, of course, in Captivate 9, they are kept all near the top here. So it's real easy to find them. It's about a half dozen or so fonts. It's all the basic stuff. Arial, Courier, New, Georgia, Times New Roman, Trebuchet, MS, and Verdana are the web safe fonts. In other words, if you choose these fonts, there's a, a font that is either the same or very similar on all computers or all tablets or whatever. So that's fine, I guess, you, you know, it really limits you. Uh, here's, here's Captivate 2017. Now I'm, I've created a, a similar slide and I've decided to take advantage of the fact that I have a creative, a creative cloud account and therefore have access to a whole series of Typekit characters. And this is now integrated into Captivate 2017. You'll see uh, underneath your character section in your properties panel, you'll see that there's a little tiny icon for Typekit. And if you click on that, you'll be brought to the typekit.com webpage where you can sign in with your Adobe account. And then you can synchronize um, fonts that you either purchase or fonts that are available as part of your plan. Uh, in other words, they're free, like this one here, the, the realigned uh, font here, or ACR Bat Realigned Equestrian Fez Bewilders. I don't know what that means, but it's the ACR BAT or Bat Foundry font, and it's something I chose for this particular course. I've synced it to uh, my account, and I'd like to use it for my title page of this course here. And again, normally if I was to publish this with Captivate 9, I'd run into some problems, right? It would end up becoming Arial or something like that. But let's take a look at the, the process here. So you'll see that because I've synchronized Typekit to my account here, there is, in addition to the web safe fonts, there's now all the fonts that I would have available to me from my Typekit account. So uh, there it is. That's the, the ACR 
Bat font. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. And uh, let's see what happens when I go to publish this. I'm going to publish this. This is a responsive design project. And um, it's going to give me a little warning saying that because there's a slight difference between the uh, system font version that's installed because of my Typekit account um, and obviously the actual web version of the Typekit fonts, um, you know, there may be some slight differences in layout. Uh, and I'm okay with that. That's fine. I always like to leave extra space into my uh, my uh, shapes and text boxes uh, or text captions to make sure that it accounts for things like that. Then we hit next, of course, and you get to the normal publish screen that you're probably familiar with for HTML5. But there's one additional component that you need to pay attention to, and that's the Typekit domains fields. Uh, in this case here, I've gone ahead and I've put in, uh, I'm going to distribute this on my Amazon AWS account so that I can share it uh, with my iPad and other places. This is, I use this, uh, the the S3 account from Amazon um, to, to share prototypes of my e-learning courses with my stakeholders. Uh, so in this case here, I just need to put the domain for that in because uh, that's sort of how Typekit works. I'm going to put a link down below in the description of this uh, video so you can get a little bit more information about Typekit if it is something that's new for you. Um, but essentially it comes down to you're not actually embedding a font in your e-learning course, but rather you're making reference to, uh, to where the e-learning course can go get that font when it needs it. And uh, of course, to register that, you need to register the domain in which you're going to be using this. So, uh, but there'll be details down below in the description if you want to click that link. So I'm just going to include the domains, which is easy enough to do. Everything else publishes the same, and we'll just go ahead and publish that. I'm getting a warning right now because in this particular instance, I'm still using a trial version of Captive 810, but you won't get this with a fully licensed version. And we'll click OK and we'll go ahead and we'll publish this project. I'm also going to upload this to my Amazon S3 account and we'll see what that looks like here. So I've already gone ahead and uploaded that to my Amazon S3 account here. So if I was to preview this now on my own computer, right, where the, this font is already installed, it's obviously going to work fine because it, it's going to find the local copy of that font and it looks totally cool. But where, of course, we're, we're concerned about is uh, obviously on other places. We want these courses to look the same. So here's the good news for you right there. So as you can see here, I'm just holding up my iPad and you can see not only has my course been published to the web where I can share it with all of you, but the font totally, totally matches. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.